Good morning, students. We are going to be looking at the review tab, right? Most of you have never used the review tab. And this is what your review tab looks like. It has proofing as one group, language, comments, tracking, changes, compare, and protect. These are the, the groups that are on, found under the review tab. The ones that we're going to be focusing on this morning is spelling and grammar, thesaurus, comment, track changes, um, the changes that you may be going to be accepting or rejecting, and pretty much that's it. When you move on to university, you will, mo you will see the, the need for this tab more because you're going to, going to be told that you need to have a certain number of words in your documents. You're going to be using word count. Maybe you're going to try, try, to, try to set the language and all of that. But for now, we're just going to do a few things using the review tab. So uh, I asked you already to open and or download the review tab activity and review tab instruction files. So the scenario is this, or let me look at the objectives first. In today's lesson, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to use the spelling and the grammar check tools, use the track changes feature, insert comments into a document, use a thesaurus feature for alternative words. And here's the scenario. You are a lecturer at the University of Technology, Jamaica, and are currently in the process of reviewing assignments submitted by your students. Complete the following activities so that the students can make the necessary changes to his research paper. All right, so we have the instructions here, as well as we have a activity, and this is a research paper. It's called Integrated Pest Management Plan for Ghetto KFC Restaurant. That's the name of the restaurant, and the name of the student is Daniel Bolding. Of course, this is fake students, so it is not real. What is here now is a document that has been prepared what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to behave as though we are the university lecturer. So those of you who are going to be working on the document as a lecturer, you only need to open, you know, only need to have the, the research document open. I will provide the instructions while we work on it, all right, so that you don't have to be toggling between more than one screen. So I'm going to set this to one side and then set my instructions to the other side to make it easy for us to be able to manipulate the documents. All right, let this done a little. And there we have it. Can you see everything, guys? I know you can't see the entire page for the, all the documents, but at least you should be able to see both documents on either side of my screen. Can you see? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. So the first instruction says, um, or the next instruction rather, do a spell check on the document. And for those of you who may forget later on, the instructions are there to do the spell check. It says you have to go to the review tab, spelling and grammar, and then make the necessary correction. So we follow the instructions. We go to the review tab. We go to spelling and grammar under proofing i hope that you can see there's a check abc icon with an abc and a check mark blue check mark i'm going to click on the spelling and grammar and the first thing it brings up on the right hand side of that window is the word trelawney now do you is trelawney spelled correctly guys that's the one in the blue at the, under the word spelling is trelawney spelled correctly right here no, miss. Yes, it is. <laughs> that is how Trelawney is, spe is spelled. So whenever you, it finds, whenever your spelling and grammar finds a word that is spelled correctly, and you know it is correctly spelled, instead of um changing it, you simply hit the ignore button, right? And if you know that the word Trelawney, that word appears multiple times in the document, click ignore all. However, if it's a word that you want to add to your dictionary, you can click add because you don't want every time you run a spelling and grammar check on any document again using your word processor for it to bring up that word. 
Alternatively, if the word was spelled incorrectly, the word processor would give you some alternative spellings, right? If any of those spellings match, then you would select one of the spellings that match and then click on change. And if you have multiple occurrences of the same word in the document, then you click on change all. So in this case, we don't want to change the spelling. We want to ignore that spelling. So I'm going to say ignore all. And I'm also going to click the add button to uh, on um in the in the in the, in the options here. No, I'm not going to click the add button right now because I have two other class, three other classes to teach. And if I click the add button, it means that they won't be able to see this option when I go to the document again. Fair enough, guys? Yes, miss. All right. So I'm going to close this. I've, I've said ignore already. And I'm going to close. All right, I'm going to double check to see um, that there is no other. <coughs> Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back to the spelling and grammar and click it again to see if there are any more. Um, all right. So it had actually bought up the next one. I didn't realize. So it's asking about the word pronotum. Now this word is, and if you notice two students, that it places the word in the right-hand panel, in the spelling panel, but if you look in the document too, it shows you the word highlighted. And if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you see the word pronotum highlighted um, with a blue or grayish looking high, um, highlight. We don't want to change the word pronotum, right? Because it is correctly spelled. You may not know the word, but I'm telling you that it is correctly spelled. So which options are we going to select up here? In the spelling miss I can press miss I can miss which one are you from us press ignore miss i'm saying to you that the word is spelled correctly so i'm saying which options up here are you going to choose ignore ignore but what if pronotum is in other parts of the document miss again press Shame other problem. ignore all ignore all ignore Right, so we would choose ignore all as well as to click on the word add to add it to our word processors dictionary. Very good. So I'm going to click ignore all. And remember, I'm not clicking the word add because of the other three classes I have that are coming up. All right. So ignore all. Yes. So it moves, it now moves to the next er error or spelling or grammar thing in the document. So it brings up the word adults, right? And on the I'm going to open up my screen just so that you can see better, you're better able to see what is happening in the window. So it says the word adult, it finds the word adult, and it says it's not a spelling error this time, it's a grammar. If you notice on this side, it says grammar. When it's, so it's instead of a spelling error, because adults is spelled correctly, it's saying it's a grammar. And notice how does the word adults look in the body of the document, as opposed to what it is showing in the grammar panel. What's the difference between the two words? This one is capitalized. Right. And you realize that it is the beginning of the sentence, right? Yes, miss. So if you are starting a sentence with a word, it must start, the word must start with a what? Capital, it's letter. A capital letter. Yes. So we are going to click on the word adults. And this time, no, we are not going to ignore. We're going to click on change because we want the sentence to begin with um, a word that starts with a capital letter. So I'm gonna click on change, right? So it now moves to the next word. So it says it's a grammar because we know that there's a word called T-A-N, tan, right? It's a color. Good morning. Good morning, who is that? Who is that? All right, 
So it's suggesting, so let us look at what the sentence says. It says the nymphs are generally darker with two prominent stripes around, surrounding a lighter tan spot or stripe on the body. So do you think we need to change the word tan to than? No, miss, you need to ignore this. Very good, Michael. So this is a, a about the columns. Very good. So we click on ignore. So I asked earlier who was that, and the person didn't answer me, so I'm moving on. What we're doing this one for the person who just came in is we're looking at um, the review tab. Do I think some persons may have issues? I'm going to admit. Good morning, Jardine. All right. So we're going to go back to the word processing. So the next word is German. So it says the German cockroach undergo three distinct life phases. What should we do in this case, students? Should we ignore, ignore all, add? What should we do? Miss? German, miss? Change, yes. miss? All right. What, which, so which one of them am I going to change it to? German, capital G, or German, or German? Capital G. Capital G. Very good. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, so we, yes. oops, did I click ignore a while ago? Uh oh, I clicked ignore okay. by accident. I'm going to go go into so this is I'm glad I did that by accident. Yeah, undo it. Because yeah, you can undo or you could simply go back in the document and just make the change yourself. So I'm going to undo and it's going to bring back up the um the the thing. Guys, I'm going to be toggling between the screen and the meet because I have to admit the students who are coming into class late. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to select German and I'm going to say um, change. I'm not sure if there are other occurrences in the documents. I'm just going to change the single one and it will change it. All right, so the next one says no. It says spelling. So it, it recognizes A E and it has it here. So let us look at the sentence. The eggs are encapsulated in an O. You know, I'm wondering how it is that it missed the, this word right here. O E G G. And that's why sometimes you have to do it yourself. All right. You have to do it yourself. So we're going to step back up. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, because we came into the document, it's asking us to resume. So we go resume. And we read what it says. It says the eggs are encapsulated in an egg casing known A E. The, Uthika, what do you think this word should be? The A E. A E miss. Mm, what should it be? Should it should it be Hi. any of the list? Very good. It should be as. So in this case, the suggestions that they have given us will not work. So we are going to go into the document, backspace, and type as. All right, we're also going to remove the O or the zero rather that is in front of the egg by clicking in the space and backspacing. All right, and then no, because we're still in the body of the document, we want to click on the resume button that is on the spelling panel and say resume. Now it's asked about the word Uthika. Uthika is spelled correctly. So which one of these options are we going to choose? Good morning, Miss. Good morning. Enormous. Enormous. And we would have selected add as well. But of course, you know the reason why I'm not going to click on add. All right. Yes. So it's asking about UTK. UTK is spelled correctly because UTK is a singular for UTK. All right. So you're going to ignore all okay. again. All right. Yes. So the next one, no. Pronotum. I'm almost sure that we had, we had said ignore all. In the previous case, but it's still asking us about pronotum again. So we're going to ignore all again. And I think it's because we have not added it as a part of our dictionary. Listen. So now it's asked us. So this is now not a spelling error, but a grammar error. So do you notice what is, what is wrong with this? The word six and the bracket. What is wrong with it? The two close, miss. In the space. 
Right, we need a space. Students, look, I want everybody else to participate. Is, um, is it Michael alone who, who you see my screen? I hear one of the females today are participating, but it's only, it seems to be Michael alone that we see in my screen and that one student. All right, so the suggestion that they have given is good. So we're going to click on it and we're going to click on change. Yeah, All right. So now they ask us about the word clean up. It says clean up as you go. Clean up of spill on floors, food contact surfaces and machine and equipment immediately. No. Hold on. Morning, I'm, good morning, Shantia. Now, I'm realizing, students, that the cleanup that they have here would not help us anywhere you go because it says it says clean up, clean up as you go. Really, you should have clean spills on floors, food contact services, and machine equipment immediately. So this the suggestion is not a good one to help with the, the issues. So we are going to fix it. So we're going to click um, beside to the left of spills. And we're going to backspace and say clean spills spill on floors. And we're going to change the C to a common C. All right. And then we're going to say resume. No, it recognizes the word receival. It says inspect all food items at receival for possible uthika or live roaches. Is receival spelled correctly, guys? No, miss. All right. So, what should it be? Yes. Yes. Mister, so I'm a bit low today. I am. I am talking very much loudly, so it may be your device. And my, I'm very, very near to my microphone. Am I sounding low to anybody else? No, miss. No, miss. Yes, miss. No, miss. So that means who was asking a while ago? So turn up your the speaker on your device, guys. But I'm talking very me. loudly. Pardon me? Miss, I was saying it's turned up. Well, I'm not yes. sure what the issue is. It may be that your device is low because some devices, speakers on some devices are lower than others. For example, my older phone, the, the speaker is very low. Miss, so, um, you going out. Are you using data trees? No, Miss. Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, an, an internet issue you know, because I'm speaking very loudly. The mic is very near to my mouth, and, and other persons are hearing me clearly. So it, it is either your device or your internet. What I'm going to suggest that you do is you. Use an earpiece. The earpiece will give it will amplify the sound a little bit better. All right. Okay. Yes, miss. Okay. So now, the, do you remember the rule about um I before E? Yes, miss. What's the rule? I before E, miss. Mm hmm. When we're spelling words. First time hearing that one. So then how you say yes, Michael? <laughs> All right, the nice. rule is I before E except after C. Have you ever heard that one before? I before no. E except after no. C. So let us look at this no, situation. It's spelled R-E-C-E-I-V-A-L. Which means if I were to type the word receive, R-E-C-E-I-V-E, Realize that the spelling is correct right here when I type it. Yes, yes miss. No, I think miss, what make happened. A dark, miss. Oh, it came up, sir. Okay, no, the screen went it. dark for a minute with the camera. It is yours because mine didn't go dark. <laughs> All right, so um, if you notice the word receive here is spelled, it's pretty much the same way that this is spelled. Yes, so I'm not hearing anything, miss. Try logging out and logging back in because I'm speaking loudly 
other persons are hearing. So it is your internet. If you are using data, you're going to have that challenge. And if your internet connection is poor, you're also going to have that channel. I'm speaking as loud as I can. If I speak any loud, I'm going to be shouting and my throat is going to start giving me challenges because I started coughing earlier, all right? And it's not because I was coughing while my voice sounds lower because I'm talking very loudly. If we were in the class, you would have been here, be able to hear me from the back of the room. And I'm very near to the microphone, all right? So we're going to leave this word because sometimes in some countries, some words are not used and some words are not spelled the same way. So you have British and English spelling, they are different for some words. All right, so you have British and English spelling different for some words. All right, so we're going to ignore all of these because there are two occurrences. We can see one here and we can see another one below it. So we're going to say ignore all. And then it says, when it is complete, it says spelling and grammar check complete. You are good to go, which means it has gone through the entire document. It has identified all of the spelling and grammar issues that it could identify and once you have gone through the whole process of changing or ignoring or respelling words, you are finished. All right, so we're going to click the OK button. Now we're going to move to the next instruction. And that instruction says, and I hope that you can see the instruction. So we are at instruction number three. It says we are to turn on the track changes. <clears throat> so now we are still, remember, we're still working with the review tab. We're going to go to the tracking group and we're going to look for the icon that says track changes. It has a page with a blue pencil or pen and I'm going to drop down the arrow beside it and I'm going to select track changes that way it will become activated or i will turn it on and you will notice before i'm gonna i'm gonna undo that i'm gonna deselect it so before i turn it on it was white the icon was white but now when i click on the arrow and turn it on the arrow is the icon is now in a blue background can you see the changes yes, yes sir. good that indicates so it's on Yes, very good observation, Michael. So whenever you see the background of this icon is blue, it means that the, the um, track changes feature has been activated. So whatever changes you make to the doc, oops, I, and I made it to the wrong document. I should have made it to the, 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 um, the research document. I'm going to do it after this. So whatever changes you make to any doc document that you, you turn on track changes on, it will track the changes that you are making, all right? So I'm gonna turn it off this one, but this is not the one I wanted it to turn on. on. And I'm gonna turn it on to the, <clears throat> the research documents. So I'm still under the review tab, track changes, turn on the track changes, all right? I'm going to go back to the top of the screen, the window, the documents. I'm going to go back to the instructions and see what it says next. So it told us how to turn on the track changes. Instruction four says, in the paragraph under the heading life cycle slash general habits, change the word zero EGG to EGG. So guys, I'd forgotten that this was part of the track changes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and make that change so that we can, you can see what happens when you do the track changes. All right. So this had the oh, zero right here. I'm going to turn off the track changes so that you don't see when I make that change. So I'm going to leave that. And then now I'm going to turn on back the track changes. And it says in the instruction that we are to change the word O-E-G-G -G to E-G-G. -G. And look at what is going to happen with the track changes on. I'm going to click in front to the left of the E and I'm going to backspace. Do you see the red line appearing on the left-hand side of my screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. 
Good. So the word cluster is indicating that with track changes on, that a change was made in that particular line in the paragraph, right? Sometimes what it does, it might strike through the letter or the word that you deleted. For example, if I were to say delete the word as, I highlight and I say delete. Well, it's not showing there. But we are, we are going to see some occurrences of it where it strikes a line through it. So let us continue. It says, in the same paragraph, change the 50 to 100. So I am going to find the 50. I'm going to scroll down. And here we have 50 right here. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to hit the delete button. And the same thing appears. So we know that within this line, we made a change. And I'm going to backspace again just so that we remove the extra space that is there between the word within and days. Then I'm going to go to the instructions to see what the next instruction is. It says, inserting comments. So part of the process of marking an assignment sometimes is to say to the student, look, change how this paragraph is worded. I don't like how it sounds, things like that. So in order to insert comments, it says, click on the heading. Get a KFC restaurant integrated pest management plan for German cockroaches. Insert a comment telling the student that he should give a brief, brief description of the restaurant and the services offered. So I'm going to copy this comment that the lecturer wants to give, right? Highlight, right click, and then copy. And then I'm going to go and look for the Get a KFC, Get a KFC restaurant integrated pest management plan for German cockroaches. So I'm going to scroll up and here is that heading. I'm going to highlight the heading and then I'm going to go to the comments group and then I'm going to click new comment. So if you when you if you realize that it it highlights the heading in a pink or pinkish highlight and then it brings up a bubble. Right? The bubble shows the word comments with a box and then it says Radiant Pinocchio because that's my name and then it has a cursor blinking and that is where you type your comment if you had a comment, okay? But I am not going to type my comment. I'm going to paste it because I already copied the comment from the instruction sheet. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click on the paste option. And now it says it shows exactly what the what the, the comment should be. So if the student were to click on the comment like that to see what the lecturer is saying, he or she would see it says, give a brief, brief description of the restaurant and the services offered, which would mean that the student needs to adjust the body of the document and add a brief description of the restaurant and what it offers. All right, are you following me thus far? So that's the first comment. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma wonderful, wonderful, great. All right, so next instruction now. And I'm trying to go as slowly as I possibly can. All right. Next instruction says, so here is the instruction in the um, instruction sheet. So that if you forget how to do it, you can always know that you must go to the review tab. Click, click on the heading, go to the review tab, click on new comment, then type the comment in the bubble. All right. Next one says, change the subheading description of pest to description of German cockroach. All right. So, I am going to so just remember German cockroach should be the, the next part of it. Instead of description of pest, you should have description of German cockroach. So we are going to, we could use the find feature to find the description of pest. Let us use it. We're going to go to the home tab and we're going to click on the find in the editing group. We're going to click on the find icon here and it says description of pest. We're going to type in the box description. But what if the document was a big document, right? And, oh, this is not the one. I keep forgetting that I should use the actual document. So I'm going to close this and we're going to go to the doc actual document. And it's right there in front of us. So we don't need to use a find feature. And it says we are to change it to description of German cockroach. So we're going to highlight this part right here. 
and we're going to use a type over mode, which means I'm not going to backspace or delete. I'm just going to highlight the portion that I don't want. And then I'm going to type in the text that I want. And that text that I type in is going to overwrite and replace what I have highlighted. So I'm going to type German cockroach. Other version, versions of words students may not do it like this. It may put a line through the words that were there, um, off paste. So it will put a red line through it. And then when you type German cockroach, it will just put German cockroach beside it. This version of Word does not do that. It just erases the text and replaces it completely with the new text. All right, so just in case you have a version of code that doesn't operate like this one, you know that at least you are doing the correct thing. All right, so next instruction. Insert a page break just before the heading, preventative and control measures. So you're learning again how to use a page break feature. Can somebody remind me how to do the page break? What should I do to insert the page break right here? I must highlight. Miss. Miss. Yes, Michael. You take the cursor, Miss. Yes. And you put it where you would like to um, put the page break. Which is right at preventative and control measures, and then what? Stop it for going again. I think it's page layout. All right, so I'm going to go to page, page layout. layout. Are you sure? Uh, what are we doing again? Look at what it says. Looking for the page you're break, to, miss. You're, you're to do, do, you see, do you see page break on the page layout? No, miss. I insert. All right. Right. So we go to the insert tab, and then we go to page break under the pages group. All right, good. So now we have our preventative and control measures on a new page. It's starting a new page. So we've done that. So, but look, look here, man. Place your P, go to insert, then page break. All right. So now we're going to be using the thesaurus and it says you're to insert a new page at the bottom of the document. So I'm going to see if you remember now. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the document and I'm going to click to the right of the full stop. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to backspace to remove the bullet. All right. And I'm going to backspace again to go right back to the margin. How do I insert a page break? Do not tell me, Michael. I'm going to call on somebody. Okay. Oh, somebody, let's see. There was a. All right, so, Ashley, can you hear me? Miss Campbell? Miss Miles, can you hear me? Yes, Miss. How do I go ahead and insert a new, a new page at the bottom of this document? So I'm microsized right here. How do I insert a new page? Our page break. We just did it a while ago. Hold on, please. Miss Allwood, I sent a link in the classroom this morning, in the Google Classroom, as well as the WhatsApp group. Please use that link. Miss Allwood? All right. Um, Miss Banton, how do I insert a page break at the bottom of the document? Miss Banton, are you there? 
Michaela, are you there? Michaela, are you there? Miss Foots, are you there? I'm here, Miss. All right, Michael, go ahead and give me the instructions because I know that they are hearing me and they refuse to answer, but it is to their loss if they do not answer. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead, Michael. Miss one to the Patriot? Yes. Mr. Oh, Miss, the same thing. I will just go through all of them, Miss. Yes. I will just go in a cursor where I want to put Patriot, Miss. Go in and insert, Miss, then use the Patriot um, option, Miss. All right. So we have the new page. All right. So the next instruction says we are to type the following words establishment, prominent, reproduction, and insects. I'm not going to type them. Sorry, first thing it says, type the term headings. So I'm going to go ahead and type the term headings and press enter. And then now it says we are to type the following words, establishment, prominent, reproduction, and insect. Now for the sake of time, I'm going to highlight the words. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy. And I'm going to go to the document and right click and paste. Right? Okay. So now, next yes, instruction sir. says we are to... Click the first word, or really, it really means to highlight. Okay. Go to review, thesaurus, and then select one of the words. So your thesaurus students is used. What do we use our thesaurus to do? Let me ask Let's you. Find alternatives for the words. Right, find al alternatives for the words. So what I'm going to do before I click on the word, I'm going to put a space and a dash and a space again, right? Just to put the alternative word. So I'm going to highlight the word. And I'm going to go back to the review tab. In, in the proofing area, I'm going to click on Thesaurus. So once you have highlighted the word, what it will do is it will look for a word that is similar in meaning to the word establishment. And it gives you yes. several options, right? Now, depending on what you want to do, you are going to select the, the word that you want. All right? So yes. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick one of these words. Establishment could mean um, formation, founding. It could mean organization, institution. All right. So I'm going to use um, organization in terms of a noun because they give you, um, give it to you based on different things. So I'm going to use it, the word organization. And then White has not put it in. Oh, um, let me close this and try again because I'm wondering why it has not, it's not inserting the word. Let us use formation. All right, it is supposed to replace the word or put the word there. I'm not sure why it is not doing that. Let me turn off the track changes for a while and see if it will make a difference. Whose mic is on? Sorry, Miss. My mic. All right, let me try, so, try another word. Oh, I did the wrong thing. I followed the wrong step. So let us go back. So we highlight the word establishment. We go to thesaurus. 
and then I want to use the word organization. So I click on the little arrow here and say insert. All right. And it will change the word from um, establishment to organization. I'm going to do the same thing for the rest. So I highlight prominent, go to thesaurus, and then I'm going to use the word noticeable. So I drop down the arrow beside noticeable and say insert. Bring back down reproduction in its own line. Highlight reproduction, thesaurus again, and I'm going to select the word replica in this case. Of course, students, remember the word that you select is based on the context within which you are using the word, all right? So I'm just, choose, just yeah. using any one of the random words that have the same meaning as the one I'm selecting. But remember that if you are going to be using it, then you're going to be using words that are with that will work within the context of the word that you are replacing. Remember that. So we're going to highlight insect, thesaurus again, and I'm going to select bug. Or in this case, let me use pest because where is it? It has gone. Select pest. And there we have four words. All right, so we have inserted the new words. Let us go back to the instructions now. It says, you're going to, I'm, I'm going to turn on back the track changes because now you're going to pretend that you are the student. So I'm going to turn on back the track changes. We are the student, miss. No, initially you were the lecturer, correct, in the document. So now you're going to oh. pretend as if you are the student and direct the lecturer. So this is what the instruction says. Pretend you are the student and you just received the document from your lecturer. Make the necessary adjustments by accepting or rejecting the changes he or she suggested. So it says right click on each suggested change, then go to review and accept and move to the next or reject and move to the next, right? Or review and accept all changes in the document. So let me explain what that means. So I'm going to make this big so you can see what is happening in the entire document now. So at the beginning here, you see the red thing here. I'm going to move the comments out of the way so that you can see what it says. So obviously there was a change made in this line. I can come here, highlight the line, and I can say I want to accept and move to the next, right? Or just accept this change. Or I can say reject and move to the next okay. or reject change. That was what I was explaining in the instructions, right? There's also the option to accept all changes and I'm not seeing it right now, but let us just go ahead and go through. So we can say accept and move to the next, all right? And notice quickly the red line on the left-hand side disappears. So we know that we have dealt with that change already. Then we come to the next one. So now it shows you the strike through of the zero, right? So I can say, I want to accept. So I say accept and move to the next. Here's the accept all changes. If you want to accept all the changes that the lecturer made, you could say accept all changes. I'm just going to do the accept and move to the next one more time and then say accept all changes, all right? So I'm in this line. I'm going to say accept accept and move to the next or oh, it highlights the one which the change is, is asked me if this is what i want to accept i go on and say accept accept and move to the next so it takes out the zero and moves to the next change which is a 50 days so it now starts to show you the strike through all right i'm just going to go ahead and say accept and accept all changes and it, if you scroll through the document you will notice that no matter how other changes you made you're, you're not going to see any red line because all it did was accept all the changes that were made. And I believe this is the, that was the last instruction. Let me just double check. So that was the last instruction. And so now I'm going to stop the recording so that they